So, about two months ago, my wife and I were talking about our need for additional storage, and, and it got brought up at some point that it would be interesting to have a hidden door um, bookshelf or bookcase um, in our den. Uh, we have a safe, um, basically to hide one, to hide the safe, and two, just for additional storage. Uh, you know, we finished the basement, didn't keep any storage. Um, having additional storage is always nice, and so I took it upon myself to... Uh, to start this, and um, you know, this is the first video of a probably about 12, uh, I think 12 or 13. Um, you know, I continue to take video throughout the process, um, and I'm, I'm starting with the end just because, uh, just to show you what it, how things turned out. Um, I'm actually very pleased with how things turned out, as you can you can see here. Um, this is the finished bookshelf, um, and with the uh, original idea that. Um, you know, I first thought that I would put one single door in there, maybe 40 inches or so, um, and then weight came into play and all, all sorts of other things. And I thought a, sh a smaller door, but then that wouldn't give access to um, just to be able to put larger things in there. And so finally I said, okay, I'm going to try to put together uh, more French doors uh, bookshelf, which uh, causes a lot of additional work and in, in engineering basically to go into that. But that's what I tried to do. Um, and so what you see or what you'll see in the, the, the following 14 videos is kind of my journey to get there. Um, and I'll show you some of the, the paperwork that I filled out as well as, as, I, as I've uh, come along. So um, basically what you have here is two bookshelves that I built um, with the, the use of a lot of online help looking at various carpentry sites around what is the best way to build a bookshelf. Um, also figuring out what is the best way to, to actually build doors out of bookcases. Um, and that's where I think uh, Gary Katz, um, his website, and his use of ricks and hinges um, is something that I relate a lot on in terms of just ideas and how to how to pull that together, um, how to mortise everything in um, in terms of the hinges uh, and, and what to things some things to watch out for. So very helpful um, in terms of being able to do that. So um, as you see, you know, looking across the bottom, very difficult. You really can't see any. Um, any gap there? Um, there's a little bit of a gap, but uh, but it wouldn't be any different than I had in the uh, initial bookshelves. Um, you don't really see anything in the corner or on the top. So uh, being able to to pull this together, um, again, pretty happy. This middle piece is actually a piece that's that's connected to the um, to the door. And so what you see here is it's coming open. As you see, the light was on and you couldn't see it. So. Um, you know, here's the bookshelf. It's about, I think each, uh, each shelf is about 11 inches deep. Um, I didn't want to get too deep, but I also didn't want to make it six inches because I think that would look, uh, that would look somewhat cheesy. Um, but as you see, the door is on, is on these pivot hinges that actually close pretty well. Um, you know, the, the distance that we had here was a little more than I was hoping. I was, you know, it's probably about an inch and I was thinking more of a half an inch, but I can't say I'm really uh, upset. But what I did have to do is this center piece here was a little wider than I had originally thought. Um, you can see over on the corner here um, where basically as it pulls out, the hinge, it, it pulls back away. Um, and then as you see behind, basically um, there's about uh, two inches of space um, behind this. That goes back there that, that as this closes it closes up against here and creates almost a, a seal um, you know that, that you really couldn't see other than uh, uh, you know unless you knew it was there um, across the top uh, basically put all of the um, I put all of the uh, the finishing touches on last um, by way at least to allow uh, to, to bring it down as close as possible so um, you can see there's a little bit of a, of a, of a maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch, um, but um, when you're standing farther back, you really can't see that. And so when it does open, um, it opens pretty close to the top there. Um, and then the same, sorry, going, going a little too fast, the same across the bottom. I had to finagle this a little bit because it was sticking out, so I, I ended up putting a, a couple three-quarters inch pieces of, of oak across the bottom. All of the um, all of the trim and everything else is made of red oak. Um, the uh, the boards are all three quarters inch uh, red oak plywood. Um, so the the tops they stand up real nice, um, but they're pretty strong, and then they um, and not as expensive as doing this whole thing under oak. So and then the back is also I think the back is actually half inch oak uh, oak plywood. So um, so this one will open up. 
And as you can see here, I mean it closes right uh, pretty close. This one opens up. Um, now, what it basically does then is as it opens, it's hard to see, but, um, but it opens uh, a little farther than 90 degrees until it bumps up against that. So that'll be something I'll have to watch over time um, so that I don't slam that open or the kids don't do that because that wouldn't be a good thing. Um, and then again, this one then simply opens up past this um, to open up along this side. So this is what... Uh, this is what it looks like towards the end. I have both of the French door bookshelves open. Um, and here you can see the safe and um, basically lots of shelving in here um, are, uh, and, and kind of my ability to get that done. So very happy with where it, put it, where it went out. I had to add some lighting across the top. Um, and, and then the bottom, as you can see here on the bottom, I had to I had to raise this up actually uh, so that it was up here because of the way they the hinge and you'll see the hinge later on as I install it but the way the hinge comes up um, it actually leaves quite a bit of space on the other side here um, and then you'll see back behind um, you know as it closes you know it basically closes up against that and so again this one this one opens up at about 90 degrees um, now on the top. I have a stop that I installed up here, and originally I was doing, I, was, I did magnet stops, and you'll see that, and, and, but then what I did is I, I, I created these, um, oh, it's hard to see, but uh, I put more mechanical stops in there, and you can see that these are basically just stops that you would find, um, or latches that you would find in, in cupboards. Um, the magnets weren't strong enough, and so I did more of a mechanical, um, a mechanical latch there. Uh, what else? So the, 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 the big worry here is sag over time. You know, I, there's nothing in the, um, um, nothing in the bookshelves right now, um, that would cause them to sag, but over time, as you can see on this side too, over time, um, I'm hoping it doesn't. Now, what I did purchase is I purchased, uh, MDF, I think it is, or it, it's this plastic piece that's very slippery. Um, and this is, again, this came from Gary Katz. And to somehow install this um, along the bottom here, so that when when it when it's sitting at rest here, it's actually resting on something. Um, I still need to figure that out and see if I need to do it or not. Um, but it is something that I have, and it's an idea that I've been uh, that I've been figuring out. So the one thing you can't do, right, is I can't open both of these at the same time, right? They will hit each other, um, and so I can only open one. Um, or close the other one. Uh, but they do latch, and they latch fine, and you'll see, um, other than that, so you can kind of see, uh, there, across the top, you'll see the light coming through. But when you turn the light off behind it, um, you really can't see anything. So, overall, very pleased with um, with how things turned out. Um, the doors are all level, they're all plumb. Um, everything is uh, fitting very nicely, so very happy with that. If you come down here, look at some of the documents that I produced. Um, this first one, this is actually a PowerPoint drawing that I made of, actually it goes this way, that I made of the drawing. So as you can see, um, what I did here is I just, uh, I laid this out so I could frame the walls, uh, frame some of the electrical, there's electrical in there and, and running some uh, um, some cable cords and some LAN network. Um, but as you can see, it uh, you know pretty close to what uh, where we ended up. Um, just had a, a, a materials list of what I was going to need, and um, the various uh, wood and other other sundry things with electrical, and then you get into lots of different uh, drawings of my messy engineering handwriting. Um, this was something looking at I think the amount of drywall you can see here. I was trying to figure out uh, where to put all of the um, all the holes in the drywall. I hate doing drywall. Um, this was something that. Um, a very uh, the, the one of the more difficult aspects of doing French doors was all the spacing here, right? So you, you had to figure out how much space could I put on the left side um, and the right side of the opening, and then how much space would that allow uh, in between the two French doors? And then with that, when one of them was open, right, what was the distance going to be uh, between this this hinge on the left side? And here, so that as the door was opening, because it, as it opens, right, it, it creates, um, it, it, it's actually more space. And so what you can see here is some drawings around, you know, the distance between here and the hinge, and then here in the corner, which those added together will be your total distance, which uh, which was basically 